Thank you very much, everyone, for the way we have to make this work well. So, so bad already. Okay, let's get started. Okay, already. So I'm assuming you are seeing the overview uh, slide. So in this session, we will dive into ScriptShifter, an open source software developed by the Library of Congress to transliterate non-Latin script to Latin script using the ALA-LC romanization tables and reverse transliteration in some cases. Then we will showcase how this tool is being put to practical use in the real world. Specifically, we will introduce the Parallelogram Cloud app for Alma, which leverages ScriptShifter's language rules and data to enhance bibliographic records. This app draws from trusted sources like WorldCat and LC Name Authority file to create accurate parallel fields in non-Latin script bibliographic records. We will wrap up by sharing some thoughts for the future plan. Next slide, please. Alrighty. Let's take a moment to understand the need for a tool like a script shifter. As the Library of Congress transitions to linked data environment and implements the library collections access platform we call Folio, we face the challenge of supporting bibliographic description for non-Latin script materials. Right now, the Voyager Transliterator is a MARC-based tool that handles this task, and it's designed exclusively for the Voyager system which limits its future use. This is where ScriptShifter comes in. ScriptShifter is being developed as part of the library's BitFrame Link Data Initiative to ensure we can continue enhancing bibliographic records in non-Latin scripts in an automated and system agnostic way beyond Voyager. Next. One of the key reasons for ScriptShifter's success is the strong collaboration across various levels. Cataloging staff from my division worked closely with ScriptShifter uh, developer Stefano Kosu. And I want to acknowledge my colleagues in my division. Many of them are here cheering me on, and I hope you will take away um, something useful from this session. This collaboration extended to the library's overseas offices as well. We are especially grateful for the expertise and the support provided by partners such as the Princeton University East Asian Library, the University of California at Berkeley, and the Bar Ilan University in Israel. Together, we developed and refined transliteration tools for Korean, Chinese, Hebrew, and Yiddish. Additionally, we worked with programmers, software engineers, and linguists, both in the US and internationally, to integrate external tools for languages such as Arabic and South Asian languages. Later in the presentation, we'll showcase the full list of languages supported by ScriptShifter. Now I'll hand it over to Stefano, who will take us through an introduction to ScriptShifter. Hello. Uh, so uh, what is ScriptShifter in a nutshell? Um, it's essentially a very simple uh, service. Uh, it's, a, it's an online service, as Jessalyn mentioned, and it does a very simple thing. It transliterates or transcribes uh, text, plain text, between different uh, scripts and languages. Um, so it, it does that in, in both ways, and uh, it, 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 there is a possibility for, for expanding uh, script shifter in, uh, in, in different ways. Uh, one can uh, create um, you know, translation tables or add, add custom logic to, the, um, to handle specific um, functionality or completely integrating with uh, third parties uh, for a particularly challenging uh, scripts such as Arabic and Hebrew, and uh, we'll get to uh, the details of it in in a slide or two. 
Um, functionally, um, script shifter uh, has been designed to replace an existing um, Library of Congress tool uh, that was uh, called a, a translator uh, that was inside the, the Voyager um, Library of Congress app. Um, uh, the, the old tool was very tied to to Mark, uh, so it uh, could only handle Mark um, Mark records, and uh, it was uh, heavily dependent uh, on Mark. Um, uh, semantics to to work. Uh, the choice uh, here with with script sh script shifter has been to uh, almost completely um, uh, decouple the um, the the tool from from Mark. There are some Mark specific options, but they they are very very specific to some languages. Um, one of the most important things about script shifter is that uh, it, it adheres to the LALC romanization tables that are uh, published and, and maintained by ALA and the Library of Congress. Uh, and it uh, performs uh, translation and transcription in, in, in both script to Roman and uh, where it's possible, Roman to script. We know that uh, some, some scripts are impossible to, to transliterate from Roman, but where possible, we have, uh, we have that option. And to the right uh, of my slide, you can see a, a kind of a, a cutout of a, a snippet of, um, of the web application of uh, script shifter where uh, you can just enter some, for example, Korean text, select the language that you're translating from. There are a couple of options. And at the bottom, there is a plain string that is the result of the transliteration. Uh, currently, um, Script Shifter uh, supports about 95 languages, uh, combinations of uh, languages as, and scripts. Um, this list is growing by the day, uh, thanks to, uh, as Jessalyn mentioned, to the many linguists and, and the language experts that have been uh, working uh, on on different uh, on different uh, parts of the uh, of the application. Um, and uh, so, um, also, uh, Script Shifter has some. Uh, different uh, options, uh, some general options, for example, for capitalize uh, the output uh, and uh, also language specific options like you see in the, in the screenshot uh, to the right. Uh, for example, for Chinese, uh, we have maybe the only uh, mark um, mentioned that we have in the application uh, where you can uh, insert a, a mark, uh, the, the code of the mark record and uh, uh, that uh, string is handled in a, in a specific way. For example, for um, mark record 700, I believe, uh, numerals are uh, interpreted in a different way. So this is very specific. Uh, this is uh, all customizable uh, on, the, on the back end. Um, so in and script shifter is accessible in a in a different in a in a variety of ways. Uh, it is uh, already integrated in the BibFrame editor tools developed by the Library of Congress. Um, it uh, it has a REST API. Uh, that's how actually it is integrated in the in the BibFrame tools. Uh, there's also a web interface that the one that you see on the right. Uh, there's a public interface where one can just uh, enter some some text and have it translated on the fly. Uh, and there's also some uh, limited uh, command line uh, um, functionality for who runs uh, script shifter on their own platform. Uh, so there are uh, many languages, as I mentioned earlier, um, already covered. Um, like the main groups are Cyrillic, Asian Cyrillic, Cyrillic, uh, Armenian, and Georgian. Uh, we also have uh, Arabic, Arabic, Hebrew, and Yiddish. And uh, many um, Asian languages, uh, such as Chinese, uh, Korean, Mongolian, Burmese, Khmer, and South uh, Asian languages. Uh, some of them are uh, still in testing, but many are uh, mature for uh, for use. Uh, at the bottom of the slide, if you end up uh, getting the source of this uh, presentation, you can uh, see the link uh, to the complete list and um, uh, that also uh, indicates what is um, in beta, what is mature, and uh, what is in development. Um, on the technical side, a script shifter, uh, well, it's written in Python. So whoever knows Python can get to it and, and improve it. 
Um, and uh, it's uh, designed in a way that is uh, extensible. It, it starts simple and it, it can be extended uh, to, to, any, uh, to any extent. Um, so to the right, for example, you see um, a, a typical uh, transliteration table. That's the simplest way to, that you can uh, define uh, transliteration. Um, this is for Armenian, for example, and there is a map that uh, simply um, creates a correspondence between uh, a Roman letter and uh, uh, or a Roman gr group of letters to um, the script, the original scripts. Um, uh, uh, transliteration um and uh you can do you know that for roman to script and script to roman that's the simplest approach to to languages um there are also uh that that can also be used in combination with uh, so-called event hooks um uh, that uh, accept uh, custom logic written in python for uh, for handling um complex transformation of of the object of the of the um transliterated string and these transformations can happen at different uh, stages of the uh, transliteration process and uh, as part of the event hooks architecture you can uh, entirely delegate the whole transliteration process to an external library or an external api service for example what we do with arabic uh, that uses a third party uh, library that uses uh, machine learning to uh, disambiguate uh, particular um, vocalization challenges. Uh, same with uh, Hebrew, we have uh, an entirely external service that we don't maintain. Um, and uh, Script Shifter practically um, presents a unified uh, interface, a front end to, to another service that you otherwise would have to go out and, and look out for uh, just to, to transliterate Hebrew. It's uh, pretty simple to contribute to to script shifter. Um, uh, you can one can uh, um, fix or create or or add new new transliteration tables um, uh, without many uh, programming skills. Uh, there is some minimal mediation with the Library of Congress staff uh, to um, contribute back to the main code base. Um, but uh, you know, linguists with a very minimal um, knowledge of a structured language can can uh, um, can uh, contribute to improving uh, current tables um also um by the way to the to the right is a, a snippet of uh, custom logic that has been attached to chinese for example this is what an example of um of a, a hook that uh handles uh chinese numerals and it looks like uh, Python code, in, in fact, is Python code that uh, runs at a certain point of the uh, transliteration. Um, there is also for uh, for end users, there is a feedback feedback form uh, that can be um, used to report transliteration um, that uh, is um, considered not accurate. Uh, so when one receive uh, translates something in the UI, uh, you can. Um, suggest an improvement, and that uh, that su suggestion goes directly to the LC staff uh, for for further uh, consultation and handling. Um, and uh, for uh, developers and more involved uh, contributors, there's de de detailed API documentation and also configuration related uh, documentation related to the configuration of Script Shifter to add uh, new models, modules, or um, or um, improve existing ones. And now I'll hand it over to Tom and I'll keep uh, advancing the slides. So Tom, please let me know when you need to, to go for, further. All right, thank you, Stefano. So uh, I'm going to talk about Parallelogram, which is another tool that's used for script conversion. And one that, that very soon in a future version is gonna benefit from all this great work that, that Stefano was just uh, talking about. Oh, I think we lost, um... okay, if you can go back one slide. Yes, okay, great. So uh, just some background about this. Parallelogram is a cloud app, uh, basically a kind of plugin for the Alma library management system. Uh, it was originally released in June, 2022 by Princeton University. And it's also used for converting between scripts, but uh, it takes a totally different approach than script shifter. And it, in just a moment, we'll, we'll get into the details of that approach. 
But rather than these approaches being uh, conflicting or, or competing approaches, really they're, they're two approaches that when combined can be something even more powerful than, than either one of them individually. And so thanks to these APIs that Stefano was talking about, uh, the next version of Parallelogram will be able to uh, incorporate uh, these results into its own results. So now um, we'll just go over an example just to, to show how the existing version of Parallelogram works. You can go to the next slide now. So uh, this is an example of some fields from a record. I, I should mention that um, Parallelogram currently works with MARC records. So all of these examples are MARC. And this is a fairly common situation where it's a Chinese record, but it doesn't contain Chinese characters. It only contains Romanized Chinese. And so the user can select um, a few fields, and then the tool will insert the Chinese characters corresponding to that Romanization. Now, this is this kind of conversion, the Roman to script conversion for Chinese. Uh, that's not something that a uh, script shifter can currently do, and for good reason, because it, it's uh, Chinese romanization is ambiguous. So, for example, uh, the surname in field 100, Tan, there's uh, dozens of Chinese characters that can be pronounced Tan, and out of context, there's no way to know which is, is the correct one. So having uh, even a very comprehensive dictionary, uh, it's not enough to know what is the correct character. So uh, the next slide illustrates what Parallelogram does to approach this problem. So rather than attempting to convert uh, these phrases directly, Parallelogram looks for records, bibliographic records or authority records for the entities that are contained in these examples. And it does so by looking for certain identifiers in the, in the record. So this record that we were just talking about, it has an LCCN, it has an OCLC number in it. The uh, 100 field has a link to a uh, LC NACO authority file record. Uh, and you can search, of course, for the title directly in WorldCat also. And so uh, by searching WorldCat, by searching the LC authority files, it can find records for these, these different entities, the title, uh, the author, the publisher, and if these records happen to contain Chinese characters, which they do in this case, uh, it'll, it can match those up with the appropriate phrases and then uh, insert them in the record. So in a way, it's not really doing a conversion. It's finding examples of the phrases that the user is interested in uh, from other records that already exist in these databases. So just to summarize, Script Shifter, it's based on dictionaries. It's based on rules specific to languages, but Parallelogram actually has no built-in knowledge of languages. It's looking for records with examples of uh, the strings that the user is interested in. And it finds those records typically by searching for identifiers rather than directly searching for the phrase. Mm -hmm. Go on to the next slide. Now, each of these approaches has uh, its own strengths. So Script Shifter, uh, it's very logical. Uh, the, the results are very consistent and, and predictable. And, and it, it has the uh, ALA LC romanization standards built right into it. So uh, you get a guaranteed result from it and, and you know what you're getting. Uh, this is very good for languages that, that lend itself to that very logical approach, languages with uh, unambiguous rules. A parallelogram, on the other hand, it's because it's not trying to convert things directly, it's it's looking up other examples. It's making use of work that has been done by human catalogers. And so it's taking in a way, it can take into account factors that a computer program might not normally be able to, uh, the context, as we talked about, different subtleties of spacing, punct punctuation, capitalization, uh, things that maybe defy rules so some languages that they're not they're not predictable and and they're not logical um, but but if a human has done this analysis then parallelogram can find examples that that are accurate so in that way it, it can capture a lot of subtleties but of course it's limited to what it what it can find uh, worldcat records aren't perfect a lot of worldcat records don't have parallel fields in them so if Parallelogram is looking for a phrase and it can't find it in WorldCat or in authority records, there's nothing else it can really do. 
So the best approach really depends on the language and on the direction of the conversion. And this example with Chinese that we just talked about is a good example, because most Chinese characters, uh, they only have one romanization, or if they have more than one, it's, it's very easy to deduce from context. But a given romanization, it may correspond to, to many different characters. So if you're converting the characters to romanization in Chinese, script shifter is really the best approach because it has a, a built-in Chinese dictionary. Um, it, it's, it's efficient. It, you know, it'll be overkill to look for the Chinese characters in WorldCat, and you might not even find what you're looking for. On the other hand, if you're converting the romanization back to Chinese script, um, parallelogram is really the only approach because there's no way with just a dictionary that you can know what character a certain romanization uh, responds to. And so we see how these two approaches really complement each other. And go on to the next slide. So now how do you combine these approaches? Well, this is what uh, this next version of parallelogram will do. Uh, it starts off going, you know, taking its normal approach. It will uh, search for WorldCat and authority records using the IDs it, it finds in the record. But then it will also do a search in, or well, not a search, but it will do a conversion uh, with script shifter using the APIs that Stefano mentioned. Now, how does it know what language to set for this conversion? Well, it looks in the 008 field of the MARC record. Now, of course, um, 008 fields aren't, aren't perfect. <laughs> Um, and sometimes they're, they're not set. So the user has the option to select a different language than, than the auto-selected language if it's not correct. But it does make an attempt to detect language. And uh, then Parallelogram will use Script Shifter to take the, the string in question and convert it both ways, script to Roman, Roman to script. It doesn't make any assumptions because you know a, a string could contain both scripts in it. But if it finds something that is different than what, what it's finding in WorldCat or the authority records, then it'll present that as an option to the users. I should mention at this point, when it's doing this conversion, Parallelogram will attempt to pick what it, what it feels is the best choice um, just based on a, its own scoring algorithm. But the user can, can open a dropdown list of, of different possibilities. And so in this case, if Script Shifter presents a different possibility than uh, what it's in WorldCat or these other sources, it's it's added to that list and it's ranked just based on uh, a number of different factors in the in the scoring algorithm. So in this way, script shifter is added to the list of options that the user has. We can go on to the next slide. Now I have uh, two examples here that show how these two approaches can be combined even in the same record. So this is uh, an example of a record for a, an item that's in the Georgian language. Georgian is the main language of the record, but it also contains Russian in the record. So there's actually three scripts that we're working with here, uh, Roman script, Cyrillic, and the vernacular Georgian script. Now there is a WorldCat record corresponding to this record, but uh, it only contains Roman and Cyrillic. It doesn't contain Georgian. Georgian is not a, a script that's really well represented in WorldCat. So what it does, it, it, it finds the WorldCat record, it inserts the Cyrillic script where it's able to find it, but then what it isn't able to find, it runs through Script Shifter. And because uh, the 008 field is set to Georgian, it knows to, to run that conversion you know, uh, on Georgian. It, it treats it as Georgian script. Well, the result is that, uh, as you can see in the 246 field and the 260 field, and even in a portion of the 245, it's able to insert Georgian script uh, where appropriate. So in this way, it's able to combine both approaches, uh, even within the same field of a record. And go on. But here's another example that's interesting in Urdu. And uh, in this case, so the, the original record, it only contains the Roman script. Now, there is a WorldCat record corresponding to this, but it doesn't contain any Urdu script. The WorldCat record really isn't helpful at all in this case. So it uh, Parallelogram used the script shifter to convert the Roman script to Urdu script, but it also looks at this uh, NACO authority record, uh, which is referenced in field 100. And it finds a, a slightly different version of that name in Urdu script, which is uh, a little more accurate than 
uh, what was produced by Script Shifter. Now, I don't know Urdu. I can't comment on what the difference is. Um, but but just consulting with a colleague who knows Urdu, he he was able to confirm this. So uh, that version from the authority record is scored higher than Script Shifter. And as a result, it uses the version in the authority record for field 100 and the version from Script Shifter in field 245, which is a completely accurate uh, transliteration of the title. So again, that, that way it uses whatever whatever is producing the best result in a given situation, it's able to use that in the record and go on. Now, besides using the Script Shifter API for doing the actual conversions, uh, it's also able to do that to uh, know the specific language specific settings for each language. Script Shifter has a number of different uh, flags and options for, for different languages. Now these two screenshots are from the settings panel and parallelogram. And as you can see, if, if the user uh, selects Hebrew as the language to use for Script Shifter, well, it, it then displays some options specific to Hebrew and also specifies that uh, for Hebrew, Script Shifter can only do script to Roman. Now, on the other hand, if they select Thai, well, the settings panel changes to uh, offer those those options that are specific to Thai. So I, I certainly appreciated just how comprehensive this API is, that you can use it to, to convert the script and also to see what options are available for a particular script. Next slide, please. So uh, just to summarize, um, Script Shifter, it's a very powerful, comprehensive tool, a lot of Research has been and work has been done to develop these dictionaries and and rules uh, for all of these different languages, as well as uh, capturing in the code the the standards for library catalog records. Uh, on the other hand, Parallelogram it is looking at examples created by humans in the the whole corpus of uh, cataloging data, including authority records and WorldCat, and in that way, it's able to capture certain subtleties, exceptions things that, that defy the rules in a sense. But by combining these two approaches, uh, it really creates something very powerful because both of these approaches have their strengths and the strengths complement each other. Now I hand it back to uh, uh, Jessalyn. Great, can you all still hear me? We can. Okay, great. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And thank you, Stefano, for holding on the fortress. <laughs> we're so fortunate that we're still connected. Um, just, uh, you know, a little bit of our future plans um, now that Script Shifter um, is very well developed. So we're focusing on the long term maintenance and creating comprehensive documentations. One thing that uh, my colleagues are working on is a user guide. Uh, so stay tuned if you are do if you do uh, if you are interested in we will be sure to share them um, um, in no time. Um, then, as Tom mentioned earlier, uh, Parallelogram is currently tailored for Alma, which is a MARC environment. However, adapting it for a linked data environment would make the tool even more versatile and robust. So this is definitely something we're actively exploring. Um, also, as we know, Script Shifter is already integrated into the Bitframe editor. Um, so expanding the, uh, its avail availability to Folio, um, which is our um, uh, uh, library collection uh, access platform. So uh, integrating that into Folio is a logical next step. Once we fully implement Folio and the Bitframe at the Library of Congress, my hope is that we can extend the parallelogram to functionality to support non-Latin script cataloging within both Bitframe and the Folio environment. Um, I think this really wraps up our presentation. Thank you everyone for your time, patience, and attention. Uh, we look forward to your questions or feedback um, you may have. Thanks again. Thanks again for that, and thank you for coping with the uh, the technical issues that came up. Um, do you have time to stay for a couple of questions, or should we shift over to Slack for questions asynchronously? Uh, what do you prefer? Um, I think for our presenters, um, 
we are flexible. However, um, the host would like to uh, conduct um, the next part. Okay. Um, if you're if you're flexible, I'll. Uh, I know you've answered a lot of uh, questions in the chat already, um, so I will ask the last couple in here. Um, uh, there is a question uh, in Thomas's examples of a hybrid approach that uses both script shifter and parallelogram. Is there any part of the interface that would allow the cataloger to decide which romanization is better? Uh, yes, actually. Um... Parallelogram does allow you to give feedback on its its results. Um, basically, when it produces a transliteration, you can you can go into the field and you can say, "Oh, this this isn't correct," or you can select one option of a number of options, and that will it'll remember what you choose, and that will affect its scoring algorithm going forward and what it gives preference to going forward. Great. Um, can script shifter be integrated with OCLC connection or other cataloging tools? It didn't look like that was on your roadmap, but is, is that a possibility? Can it? Yes, because it has an API. Uh, it hasn't been, but someone can integrate it anywhere, uh, that, you know, can, can interact, interact with it, REST API. Wonderful. Um, uh, does the Hanzi apply to ZH Hans from, there's a, there's a question in the chat that's probably easier to answer um, on Slack or in the chat, but there's a question um, about, um, about whether it applies to some specific Chinese um, thing that is linked to uh, that I don't, I'm not familiar with. So that's, that's a question from Jackie Shea. Um, I'm not uh, seeing that one in the chat. It's a ways up. Um, this was at about two fifteen p.m. Um, I can repeat. I can um, copy it to the end of the chat. Oh, it's so yeah. It's the link is oh. basically to the Chinese dictionary that is okay. built in to Script Shifter. So, well, I guess this is really for S Stefano then. Uh, we're getting a little bit in the weeds here, but uh, this is how. Um, so, what you link to um, is uh, the second part of um, of a Chinese table. So the tables in in uh, Script Shifter are uh, hierarchical, and they can inherit from one another. And the reason why Chinese is split in two is because Tom has been maintaining the main uh, body of the. Um, of the uh, Chinese um, transliteration, which is uh, in the in the code is the underscore Chinese base, and what uh, you see here that Chinese.yaml is just the overlay for numerals that I've been maintaining. So I don't want to step on Tom's toes when he um, updates the uh, his uh, table, so he can just drop his table in into script shifter and the 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 second table would just overlay the the numerals um uh, to um uh, to Tom's um table. I don't know if that is clear or if it makes sense, but that is not the complete uh, Chinese translation table. In fact, there's almost nothing in it. Got it. Um uh there's a there's a comment from Sarah Adams um, uh, saying that she'd love to if if her library could use script shifter to update slash enhance so many of our older catalog records where the main fields are purely transliteration into Latin script. It makes me sad slash frustrated, for example, that a speaker slash writer of a non scripted non Latin scripted language can't search in that script to receive results of resources created in that script. Slightly a word salad. Sorry. I think too a lot about how languages and scripts are a D E. IA issue. These kinds of tools could be useful in proactively updating our records to take some power away from the linguistic colonization where it has occurred in library catalogs, etc. And there's some hearts and other emojis on that. Um, and then I think the last actual question in here is how accurate are the tools? Has there been assessment done? And it sounds like you're you're using feedback from users, but um, what's I guess what's the uh, the process for that? We're using a number of tools. 
uh, we have some uh, um, automated tests that um, some catalogers have provided some strings that um, we can run automated tests uh, every time we want it. And some of them are not 100% accurate. You know, some of them have, have some, some gaps. Uh, some other languages have been less um, less thoroughly tested, you know, just due to the, you know, sometimes the lack of, uh, of expertise or the lack of time in that, you know, very few language experts in less uh, less popular languages, I would say. But I think Jessalyn has more to say about that. Well, I think uh, uh, as a developer, Stefano really is the key there to uh, collaborate with us. So we provide language expertise uh, to confirm and verify uh, uh, the, the, the text results that uh, he produced from the tool. And then we can verify from the language perspective whether the transliteration is accurate or not so accurate. And then there's a back and forth fixing the two, as you can imagine, with any kind of full application development. So that's one thing. Um, another thing I think we haven't touched on in this presentation is that um, uh, there is that uh, uh, dependency, um, not the quite accurate word, but dependency um, on the romanization standards. So the romanization standards um, has to be designed to be conducive for ma machine manipulation. And this is an issue that uh, Stefano um, has been struggling with, and we have been really working, you know, sort of uh, <laughs> exhaustively to try to find ways uh, to accommodate, um, you know, any sort of machine manipulation. Uh, so there is that limitation uh, there in terms of which languages we are able to develop the transliteration tools. And I want to take this moment to also uh, thank colleagues in my uh, in the library, uh, Network Development and the Mark Sanders Division. Um, I think of Matt, uh, Matt Miller, uh, who is on the call. Don't know if he's still here, but he helped answer one of the questions and he's one of the uh, key supporters in that, in that division. It really takes a lot and we have uh, technical, technical expertise, um, Stefano and Tom with the, you know, par parallelogram. And luckily in my division, we have a, gr a great number of language expertise. And I mentioned, you know, the conducive of the romanization standards. So there are several things uh, that come into play. Um, I want to just maybe mention, uh, you know, folks' interest and desire in uh, seeing more languages. So it does take uh, several factors, including indigenous languages. I, yeah, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, there there was a lot of back and forth in the chat about indigenous languages. So it's, this seems like a, a, a keen area of interest. Um, I'm sorry that there isn't more time for discussion. This is like such a rich, uh, like a, a rich topic. Um, so hopefully some of you can join in on discussion on the, the conference Slack. Um, and thank you again for, uh, for um, coping with the the uh, on and off uh, AV issues. Um, we really, really appreciate it. This was a fantastic presentation. Um, so I believe we're going into a slightly delayed afternoon break at this point. Um, thanks so much. This is um, the end of this Zoom. So you will have to join a new Zoom for the next sessions. Thanks.